Hey guys, Rochelle here with Amethyst Ascension. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for joining me again. So today I am going to be doing a review of the Slavic Oracle that was sent to me by the creator, Annie L. Reed, and the uh, illustrator was Cindy Monroy. Now, I had got this back in the beginning of December, and I did a complete walkthrough and first impressions of it. Um, so I will be putting a card for you to see that because I'm probably, I mean, I might do a full walkthrough, just a quick one with this review, but I really wanted to work with the deck for, you know, about a month or so. And that way I could give you my best review after actually working with this deck. And so, first of all, let me tell you, my first impressions were, you know, that I love the artwork. I was kind of wondering, what am I gonna pair this with? And I showed on the walkthrough, pairing it with the um, Slavic Legends Tarot. Let me show you. which is super cool. Um, and I was excited about pairing it with this because there's really no guidebook that comes with this particular deck yet. There, I'm hearing that there is going to be a PDF um, guidebook. However, I don't have it as of yet. And so there was no stories or anything that came with this particular tarot. Granted, you don't need that in order to work with the system of tarot. That is the beautiful thing. But I wanted it because I want to learn more about the Slavic, um, you know, the legends, like it says. So, anyways. So, I had initially thought that I would use it with this. Which, it is really cool with that. You know what, let me turn these over so you can at least see. I wanted to show you the, the box. Another initial thing that I was concerned about was that it's only like 33 cards. And I normally like to have a bigger Oracle deck than that. However, I have made concessions before depending on the actual deck itself. Like the um, one of my most favorite Oracle decks, which is the, um, oh, it's the which one. Anyways, Compendium of Witches. I don't use the, like, tool half. I only use, like, the messages from the different witches. And so that's even less, I believe, than 33 cards. So I do make concessions when it's something that's really good. And I found that in this deck. And, you know, the beautiful thing also about this particular deck is it is like more than... 33 cards also because not only does it talk a little bit about the legends, you know, and the reason why, um, you know, the they made the the actual card that they did, you know, why what was up with the artwork and the idea behind it, but then also like card meanings, right, upright, and then a blockage position, a divination position, a reversed position, and an action position. So, depending on what type of um, spread you're using, what kind of questions you're asking, it is more than like 33 cards because each one of these might be one of these different prompts that you would use that card for. So, I love that about it. I love that when I was using it with, let me just put these together so you can see. When I was using it with this particular deck, I was getting the lushness of this, but the folkiness and beautiful folky artwork and the stories with this. And the artwork initially didn't seem to work for me, but the more and more I like delved in, it really did. 
It really, really does. Probably because they are different. And I do think that a lot of the coloring, even though we've got the black borders and then we've got the white borders here, that actually helped in this situation, I think. I love the backs of these cards so much. They're just gorgeous. And let me show you. Let me get that out of the way. Let me show you how well these just shuffle. You know, I have short, stubby fingers. I mean, if you look at my palms, look at how long the palm is in comparison to the fingers. <laughs> yes, I think I have a fire hand is what it is in palmistry. But anyways, I love how easy it is to shuffle this because it's not a super thick uh, deck as well. The cards, I love the cardstock. I love when it's flexible. Look at that. It's just a beautiful thing when I can shuffle something because shuffling is another like massive part of my tarot practice. I I've said this before, I have this thing where it's hard for me to necessarily focus sometimes. I've got to have other things going on in order for me to like focus in on one thing. So if I'm shuffling, and it is such a beautiful shuffle, if I am shuffling, it just helps me to actually be able to, um, if I have a deck that's really good at shuffling, it gives me the ability to really almost like tunnel in or channel into that particular deck. Just really be able to focus in, you know, like narrow my focus on whatever intention or whatever um, kind of reading I'm looking for to really give me the answers. So that is something that I can really achieve with this deck. Now, another thing, this deck really, um, Gosh, did it real? It, I don't want to say it puts you in your place. It doesn't put you in your place. It's not like that, but it really talks about like other things to be aware of. You know, it doesn't. Um, how do I say this? It's not that it, it doesn't pull any punches. Those aren't the right terms. It like digs in deep. This feels like such an ancestor deck for me. Now I had said it in the walkthrough and somebody had mentioned, and I can't remember if it was on this one or it might've been on the Slavic legends um, when I did that walkthrough. Although I am German and I feel like a lot of this is German and they said, well, you know, Slavic isn't German. I understand that. However, it is on the border. So many, many of them would merge, you know, a lot of the customs, because let me tell you, even though this is not German, there is a lot of stuff that looks German in this because cultures merge, especially when their borders are that close and migration. So, but not just that, I do have in my lineage, Russian, and um, Slovenia, Slovakia, uh, Poland, uh, among others, obviously the German and the Irish and the English and the, well, the Wales and any, anywho, and Nordic or Scandinavian, I should say, but I think there's even a little bit of Asian in there. <laughs> I am a, a mutt, okay, but I'm mainly German. At least that is the DNA right now that it's showing up because that continues to change as their database gets bigger. So anyways, this really feels like an ancestor deck for me, but not just for me because my husband, his mother is was, she's passed now. She has been for quite a few years, but anyways, she was, he always thought Polish, but when I did a search on her um, name, her actual maiden name, it's Ukrainian, which Poland and the Ukraine are also part of Slavic um, descent. And so my children 
are also of that, mainly from my husband. So these are, this is a great deck to use as far as family goes, family stuff and ancestry. And oh, what did I do? But I love that it's so folky too. The actual, let me see if I can get down a little bit closer. The actual artwork is so folky. I'm just in love with it. Let me do that. Can you see, I mean, this feels so ancestral to me and doing shadow work and ancestry and um, like ancestral trauma. And this is something I was even talking about with, I'm just making sure I'm in screen with uh, Courtney from uh, Aries Witchcraft. The DNA, the DNA that we carry, you know, just like for me, I was not raised with my father, but uh, I have his laugh. That's not environmental. That's something that is passed on through the DNA. That is something that's passed down through your lineage. So regardless of whether or not you knew your ancestors, you are a part of your, or your ancestors are a part of you. And so this is the deck that I am really using for ancestral stuff and wounds, ancestral wounds, as well as for my family even though my family doesn't really get into it. <laughs> I do. I like learning about even like my husband's. He didn't want to do the ancestry stuff, the DNA stuff. So I made him do it just so that I would know because my kids were like, eh, I don't care. So if we had mine and we had his, then we at least had a good understanding of their lineage as well. The artwork, one of my big concerns in the beginning was whether or not this artwork was really gonna go with some of my other decks. And I really had to think hard for this because this is folky, really folky. And the colors are more of like your deep autumn colors, but even not like your your bright oranges and, which there is some of that in there, but it, more like your reds and your yellows and your dark blues and like your grays and it, it's just beautiful, but I didn't know what I could use with it. So I had to go through and really like think about what I could use with that. So I wanted to show you some of the pairings that I had discovered, but ultimately, let me tell you, throughout the month of December, I mainly used this deck and the, um, the golden uh, oracle as well, the golden light oracle, also from the same creators. And I mean, I used a little bit of tarot, but really not that much. I mainly used oracle in December. So, but I wanted to show you some of my um, newer decks that I think actually look really good with it for different reasons. Not always just the color matching, or the design matching, but for other reasons as well. So a new deck that I just got is the Narrative Alchemy Tarot by uh, Chrissy Bentley. And first of all, there's the backs. This one also shuffles really good, but I love that it is just colors and words because I feel like the Slavic Oracle deck, if I'm using it to really, you know, talk about, let me see if I can move this. I wanna make sure I'm in there, guys. Um, if I really wanna use it for 
ancestry and I feel like it is, I feel like there are stories. These are stories that are being told about the things that I didn't even know about my ancestry, you know, which I find just completely fascinating because I'm also a history buff. And I like using a deck, and I've said this a million friggin' times, not just for readings, but also for just learning and adding layer upon layer of a reading to get more introspection, you know? Um, so I thought the narrative alchemy tarot which is just all about words and making stories out of it I, I just love this deck it's brilliant I love everything about it I think Chrissy did a fabulous job but I think it like even though this is purple and it doesn't really go but it does in its simplicity it does so momentum and then resistance and then rest after doing all that that makes complete sense to me it's like you're seeing the whole story. Rumination, celebration, protection. Yes. <laughs> so like your nine of swords, right? I could think of many words, but this is just like something that once you get one keyword, it just like opens up, right? And then you have your, your main card that's telling you protection. Because of this and protection, this is what comes afterwards, the celebration. Because then you can kind of like relax and you're not so much in your head, right? Or in that negative headspace because you have protected yourself. This also seems so steeped in magic. Folk magic at its core, which is another thing that I am very interested in learning more. So that's another aspect of this deck that I just, I'm just giddy about. And another reason why I didn't feel like I needed a whole lot of tarot to go with this deck because I feel like at the end of the year, 2022, I needed a little bit of magic in my life. Because I want to just close that year out and start fresh in 2023. And in 2023, I really want to, my words for 2023 are embrace and integration. And with acceptance comes peace. So for me, that is all about really tapping into the magic that is life and looking at all aspects and integrating that and embracing that which I cannot change nor want to change about my own character, about my lineage, what what have you. And then finding peace in that. You know? Acceptance and joy. Fight. Hmm. Patience, focus, drain. I feel like these words help you to understand maybe like what had been happening in the past, where you're headed in the future, and what is currently happening now in this kind of setup, right? So patience, what is this? The seven of pentacles, right? Maybe because there's something, and I love the stories in here too, like these creatures that would feed on people, um, the negative things, right? I can't remember all the names, but you know what? Actually, let me pull out and let me read this one to you. I think I read this one before though. I think it's fascinating. Deprive of strength or vitality. Yes. For some, life on earth didn't end after death. Those, oh, that's right. I did read this, I think. See, I'm just like so captivated by these, um, these things. It, it says, for some, life on earth didn't end after death. Those who could continue on as the living dead were impious persons, those born with unique characteristics, those who died unnaturally, including being the first to die from plagues and those who didn't receive proper burial. 
and Slavic folklore, these undead beings were vampires who could reanimate their corpses or fully material materialize into um, darker, sorry, darker copies of their once bodies after drinking a sip of blood. To prevent these life force predators from draining local animals and members of their living family, or worse yet, from reproducing certain rites, had to be performed. Post-Christianity, confirmation was a ritual believed to save the soul from vampirism. Before the advent of Christianity, the body could be burned, decapitated, buried deep within the earth, or pinned down by an iron or wooden stake in its heart, head, or tongue. So even, and there's more, but even hearing about these particular folklore legends that are so, um, I mean, like steeped in other things like uh, the, the stories of vampires and actual stories of families or a whole families like um, becoming sick and then them believing that somebody had come back from the dead. Uh, Courtney and I did, I think, a uh, podcast on beings like uh, supernatural beings and stuff like that. But we had talked about like these beings that like if you're having like bad dreams or just noticing constantly that you are like going to negative spots. Could it be that there is something that is in your energy field. Can this be warning you that you can't focus on other things because you are being drained, perhaps from your lineage or somebody sending something to you and showing you like an action. So it gives you an action. Don't allow yourself to be compromised. Safeguard your reputation and your word. Start by saying no, acting in accordance, looking forward and never looking back. So in a blockage position, your inability to let things go, especially old hurts and toxic people, is damaging. Uh, life, live your life as if the past never happened and you can never be held down. See, that's another thing. Things that your ancestors did maybe 100 years ago or they experienced 100 years ago. You know, I feel like we still hold that in our DNA, and doing and recognizing with a deck like this, it can help you to be able to recognize, acknowledge, and move on. And by integration, that means accepting what maybe your forefathers did or what you experienced and that that doesn't have to be a part of your existence now and how with an action you know, um, prompt how you can help fix that. That's what I believe like integration is. But anyways, I've totally gone off track, but that's what this deck has really, really helped me, uh, focus on is like, you know, um, honestly shadow work that has to do with ancestry, family trauma. And that's why another deck that really, works really good with this and I love the artwork together all the white space together and or the black space looks really friggin cool it just works and the deck that I am talking about here is the macabre tarot by Samantha West this is very much about like um you know archetypes and working through your shadow and I feel like this is the deck for that Hmm. Isn't that just fabulous? That was one of my concerns, like I said in the beginning, was what am I going to be able to pair with this deck and it work in my collection? Because I didn't want to go out and buy new decks, which sometimes I do that, honestly, in order to work with this. But even though I chose to do a lot of it just by itself, which I love because I am a huge Oracle person, I probably have more Oracle than I do Tarot because... Oracle is so easy to expand on, whereas Tarot, it is, but Tarot is a system where Oracle, each Oracle deck can be its own system, which I love. 
So these just work really good together. The macabre and the folky. This still feels kind of folky to me. Three of Cups, yes, Dance, and the Chariot. Huh, I love that. So that was another one, the Macabre. And I have a couple other ones that I wanted to show you that I have actually found, I think work really good with this deck as well. And one of them, here's the backs. I just really love the white space. It just makes it work, and I'm not usually like that. I'm not usually a black and white deck. But with this particular oracle, it just, it just shines. So it just works for me. Um, I'm sorry, this is the Wandering Moon Tarot. Do you see how beautiful that is together? And I know these are not like even. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm just like uh, not presenting this really well. Let me maybe scan or pull it. There we go. A little bit. Oh. So, yes. The Wandering Moon with the Slavic Oracle. I love it. Oh. Five of Moons, ten of, which is Cups, Ten of Wands, the Stand. So, like I was saying, the initial concerns that I really had with this deck was the size. Size matters. <laughs> That's what she said. Anywho, <laughs> um, it doesn't, it's not a problem with the stack. It's absolutely, I, I thought maybe I would get repeat deck or repeat cards, which even with getting repeat cards, depending on the spread or depending on uh, the questions that you're asking, what position it is falling in, whether it's a reverse position, whether it is a blocked position, whether it is an upright or an action position, you've got like four different cards because of the way that it was set up. I like using, with this particular deck, the guidebook, most definitely. So, one last deck that I want to show you that I think actually works really good with this and this is a newer one and I'll explain why it's because also when I think of folk magic now I don't know what plants because I'm not like this major you know herbologist I don't know like what is um, native to like these different areas of uh, Russia and Poland and um, Slovenia, Slovakia, and Ukraine. I don't know what is their native plants or herbs that were used, but I do know that in folk magic, a lot of green witchery is used. And this just, just, Friggin' works for me. And this deck is called, and it's a newer one, The Alchemist Garden. And this is by, uh, do, 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 do. here's the guidebook for that. This is by Maya Bear. Oh, no, no, no. I think so. Anywho. It's the Alchemist Garden. I like using... Because like I said, this feels very much like a witchcraft, um, spiritual practice, family, uh, lineage, and um, ancestry kind of 
deck for me. And of course, that also fits in. I could probably see also using like the Green Witch with this, the Green Witch Tarot. But this one just looked better for me. Pride, Rest, and Hospitality. Hmm. Energy and Release, Housekeeping. Gosh, yeah. Illusion offering the magician. Wow. So my review of this deck is I love it. I think it is going to be an integral part of my practice, especially revolving around ancestral work and ancestral um trauma and learning about my ancestors and how to move forward from that and releasing a lot of like um, um ancestral um, wounds and stuff like that so I I hope you have enjoyed this you know I don't do reviews very often it's just not my thing I usually I talk about the decks that I use, like in hashtags and stuff like that, but it is not my normal to do a review because I just feel this really deep need to make sure I am doing a deck justice. And so it's not something that I normally do. I can only tell you from my own experience whether or not this was a hit or a miss, the things that I was concerned of after using it, whether it became a problem or whether or not it was something that I actually enjoyed. And for me, this is a phenomenal deck. I would highly recommend anybody of that lineage or anybody really, because I like learning about other lineages that are not mine as well. But this is a awesome deck for a folk witch I think of any type to utilize in their practice for shadow work, for ancestral trauma, ancestral gifts, things to do as far as actions, things that could be blocking you. It's highly spiritual also with the uh, different, different uh, practices that it talks about. Even just like singing with other people, healing, different symbols and what they mean, you know, synchronicities, just when to harvest, knowing when to harvest, being grateful for your harvest, looking at the fades. It's just an awesome friggin' deck. So thank you so much, uh, Annie L, for sending this to me. And thank you for... Uh, for you who's watching, thank you for joining me with this. And I would love to know what your thoughts of this particular deck are. Have you used it? If not, can you see yourself using it? So thank you so much. And I am sending you love always.